Hi, welcome to Barrack Mitsubishi. My name's Mitch. Today I'm going to do a walk around video on these two HSV E Series 3 Maloos. So this silver one here is a 2010 model and this grey one here is a 2011 model. Now when they left the factory 2010, 2011, there's not much difference between them but there are a few minor differences between these two exact cars that are with me today. I uh, will run you through those cars and the differences. Um, visually, I mean they look the same other than the paint. They've both got the, um, the Pentagon wheels obviously finished in the grey. E Series 3 front bumper with the daytime driving lights, the fog lights, the VE headlights. Being the E3, it also gets the nostrils on the bonnets as well. Um, I'll start out by walking around the silver car here. So this is our uh, 2010 model. Uh, condition wise, it is quite good. Um, I believe for its age in kilometres, it does represent a good quality car. Uh, being HSV, obviously you do get the body kit. E Series 3, a little bit more aggressive than the other ones, I believe. Uh, heaps of tread on the tyres, red calipers with the slotted rotors. You do get your HSV badging down the lower end of the, just above the, uh, the side skirt there, as well as the Maloo badging above the rear vent. Um, it is not a functional vent, it is for, purely for aesthetics, I think it does look quite good. Condition of the car itself is fantastic, as I did mention. There are a few minor little marks and scuffs on the vehicle. Um, now, one thing I will point out is it does have a section of clear coat. Uh, about the size of a 20 cent coin uh, that is missing from the, uh, the hard lid, you can just see here. That's the only imperfection on the vehicle other than a few minor little marks that will definitely polish out on the body itself. Moving around to the back of the car, uh, 317 kilowatt badging, R8 and the HSV red flag. We have got the Walkinshaw exhaust on this model with the reverse parking sensors. The Walkinshaw exhaust on this car isn't too loud, gives a great note, doesn't drone while you're, do while you're driving. Uh, all the way from, you know, 20, 30 kilometers to 100 kilometers an hour, no drone at all. And rear wheels, again, fantastic condition. Um, tires are, again, fantastic as well. Heaps of tread left on those. Like I said, the fantastic condition other than that one little mark on the, on the hard lid. And as I said, some of those minor little marks that are around the car will buff out quite easily. So you can see there, the passenger side front wheel in fantastic condition, again with those red brakes. We'll jump across to the grey one now quickly and walk around the grey vehicle. So this is the 2011 one. Again, like I said at the start, no major differences at all from when they left the factory between 2010-2011. I quite like this colour. Now this car does have um, brand new tyres on the, I think all four corners, but definitely on the driver's side and on the passenger side. They've got the little plastic nubs still on the tyre there, so you can see that they are brand new tyres. Again, all the same design elements moving across from the silver 2010 model to our grey 2011 model. No clear coat missing on this car at all. There is a minor little scratch along the hard lid side just here. Very difficult to see. Um, other than that, fantastic condition again. Um, no exhaust or modified exhaust fitted to this car. This car is completely standard. Same Pentagon wheels as we could see from the silver car. Overall fantastic condition again. Out of the two cars, being a year newer, uh, you would expect this car to uh, have that little bit better quality in terms of finish, uh, having one less year on the road. Um, but both of them I think are fantastic cars. And if you're looking for a uh, performance ute, these are definitely the ones to go for, they look fantastic. What I'll do now is I'll open both bonnets, explain to you a bit about the engine that came in the E Series 3 Maloos, um, and then we'll, from there we'll jump inside the car and run through some of the tech and features. Okay, so looking out of the bonnet here, we're gonna start with the 2010 E Series. Okay, so looking under the bonnet here, we're gonna start with our 2010 E Series 3 Maloo uh, in the silver. So this is obviously the LS3 6.2 litre V8. So it does produce on the plaque 317 kilowatts and 550 newton meters of torque. As we saw in the walk around video, this silver one does have the Walkinshaw exhaust and you can see it does also have the Walkinshaw intake. 
It does give the car a little bit more of a uh, aggressive induction noise. Uh, and obviously paired with that exhaust, it will obviously produce a little bit more power than the 317 as quoted on the rear of the, uh, the car and also on the engine plaque there. Uh, but obviously uh, it's something that a performance car enthusiast or someone that's looking for a performance ute would be obviously desiring. We'll jump across now to the, to the grey car. So this is our 2011 model. Same again, it is the LS3, the 6.2 litre engine. This one has a few extra modifications that uh, would go unnoticed to someone that doesn't know uh, what to look for. So this one does have a VCM over the radiator intake uh, with a MAF. So people that know what that is, uh, you can get a MAFless tune which can you know, alter the uh, performance of the car. Some people say it works, some people say it doesn't. At the end of the day, it's each to their own. Um, I don't believe you need to have a mathless tune. Uh, this one is obviously the MAF tune, as I did mention. It does also have upgraded uh, coils and ignition leads. So you can see there, um, my camera person panning around the engine bay there, you can see the blue leads on the side of the, uh, the block there, next to the extractors or the headers, um, and they're an upgraded lead system. Okay, now we're sitting in the 2010 model. Um, this one is uh, a year older. It does have um, a few extra features than the E-Series 2. Um, I'll run you through some of the different features here. So I'm just cycling through the trip computer. At the moment, this car does have 82,861 kilometers on the clock. Running you through the interior of the car, I will show you some of the features and buttons where things are located, some of the extra bits and pieces that you get with a, with a HSV over the standard, obviously, the SS of the day, and obviously um, the HSV EDI system. I'll touch on that again. It's, uh, I've done it in a few videos before. It is a fantastic system. Um, this one here, uh, being the E-Series 3, is one of the first iterations of the system. Really easy to use once you get a handle of it, but I'll quickly walk you through that today. So starting with the steering wheel, um, you've got your telephone volume and answering calls on this side by pushing the volume rocker. Passenger side, you've got navigating through stations, or if you're on the right menu on the trip computer, you can navigate through the menu system through that. Now, your hard buttons have your audio and trip on this side, nav, and your HSV EDI. So your HSV EDI system is the system that I will touch on in a little while. Indicators on the right, wipers on the left, Cruise control function is on the right hand stalk. Your light switch is on the front fascia of the um, right side of the steering wheel, just below your uh, instrument cluster. There is auto lights. Um, now, being that this is the manual car, obviously you've got the three pedals. They are finished in like a sport metal finish with rubber grips. I don't know if my camera person can see them very well, um, but they're very good. You know, say for example, you step in a puddle or you accidentally walk through some fuel at a service station, you're going to have that grip with the added rubber studs in those pedals. Steering wheel is tilt and reach adjustable with a locking tab underneath the steering wheel. Moving across to the centre console, we're going to start at the top there. We've got three gauges. You've got battery voltage, oil temperature and oil pressure. So as you can see, the oil temperature in the middle there is quite low. So I'm not going to go revving it like crazy or anything like that. But as you can see, if I put my foot on the accelerator just a little bit, you'll see the right hand gauge, the oil pressure will move a little bit, okay? Obviously that'll fluctuate up and down. That's not too bad of a concern. Obviously you don't want the needle reading too high or too low. Um, and same with the oil temperature. The oil temperature will always start at the bottom and work its way up to roughly about 125 degrees. Between 100 and 125 is normal. Anything higher than that, you might have an issue. You might need to have a look at something in the car. Moving down from that, obviously your vents, our touch screen. So touch screen with hard buttons on either side. Um, we've got radio, media, auxiliary, telephone, muting the audio, config to set up the car in terms of your settings, Bluetooth connections, etc. Map, the car does have a navigation system. So we just have to wait for that warning to dis disappear. And we can just go map again, and it shows us the map. Okay, so entering, a navig entering the uh, navigation system, you can enter the address there, choose a favorite or history from there, etc. And then there's a help station as well. So you can go through um, and run through different features or all the other options for the help button. 
there is an eject here for the CD. There's no disc. Now it is hidden, very hard to see there, but it is directly above your hazard light switch. There's a little slot there and that's where your CD slot is. Below that we have our Malu R8 plaque. Hard buttons for our volume and seeking of tracks and also our folders and track buttons for our MP3 capability of the vehicle. Beneath that we have our air conditioning controls. Air conditioning controls will just be displayed on the top section of the screen. Um, so as you can see, we're getting the fan, the distribution, and it stays up in the top, top bar there. So I can see that my phone has connected to the audio system automatically. I have driven this car a few times before. That'll then obviously enable us to use the telephone system. So if I push the telephone button, it should bring up the phone. Do it from there. So there we've got our keypad, phone book and call history. And then also obviously being connected for Bluetooth, uh, we also have Bluetooth audio as well. So we just hit the media button there and we have Bluetooth streaming. Um, moving down from the air conditioning controls there, just turn them down. We do have our traction control switch. Uh, traction control, there are a few different modes. There is completely on. There's competitive mode, which is the first step. Competitive mode, <coughs> excuse me, will allow the car to slide a little bit before the, let's call it the nannies kick in and try and keep you straight. Pushing it again, turns it back off. So that you're back to normal, full, full traction. Push and hold the button for a couple of seconds. and it turns off completely. There we go. As I said, manual uh, six-speed gearbox with both of our uh, Malu R8s. Um, pretty good throw in the, in the uh, lever there. It's not too long. Um, you can go to some performance places and they can give you a, um, a, sh a sh rip shifter or a short shifter. I don't think you need it in the Malu, really. It's, it's quite a good um, shifting style. Not too much weight, it goes into the gears quite easily. I have selected reverse gear, so I'll get our camera person to look at the camera there. Um, for its year, I think it's a good good quality camera. Better to have no camera, or better to have a camera than no camera at all. And you do also have reverse parking sensors as well. Moving back from that, we have our door locks, mirror switches, and our window switches as well. So they're located in the center console here, which is really handy. Handbrake. Now the reason the handbrake is designed like this is because um, the, e, the VE series Commodore was the first Commodore to be exported to left hand drive markets and that meant that they didn't have to develop a whole new centre console um, so that this section here would also be the parking brake in uh, left hand drive markets. Cup holders, quite a decent storage bin there. You've got your USB and auxiliary ports just under that little plastic rubber flap and a 12 volt socket at the back of the cubby hole there as well. Now being a HSV Malou, you do get some extra storage behind the seats. There's a couple of cut, uh, storage nets um, up around lower. The lower storage net is quite deep, probably about 15 to 20 centimetres deep in towards the recess of the back of the tub. And that's both on the driver's and passenger side. Heading back to the screen now, I've run you through everything on the interior of the car in terms of functionality. I will show you the HSV EDI system. So on the steering wheel, we push the HSV EDI button. Uh, SV Enhanced, build number 228. So first thing we come up with is our graph. So you've got your horsepower or kilowatts and newton meters. So um, as you rev the car up a little bit, you obviously see those graphs moving. And you can customize these graphs in any way possible. You can move through elevation, external temperature, <coughs> fuel usage, air intake temperature, now that's really fun to watch because on a really cold morning it will start out quite low and as you drive it will creep up, I'd say even on a day that's probably about 4, 5, 6, 7 degrees in the morning, it will roughly sit at about 15 degrees for your intake temperature. At the moment now, the car's been idling for a little bit, we've got some decent coolant temperature, oil temperature is still quite low, um, as I believe it is 12 degrees outside and we're sitting on 21 degrees for our intake temperature. Manifold pressure and back to power. 
obviously cycling through as soon as you move to a different graph on one excuse me one bar to another one it will obviously block out that graph that gauge for that same section there moving through to different pages leaders per 100 uh, stopwatch so you can actually use this on a racetrack you can use a split mode lap mode now this is a handy one as well so this is a race system so what it can do is you can actually load a racetrack um, and there's some built into the system so we hit track so there's custom track there's quite a few custom tracks that haven't been used We've got Barbagello in Perth Baskers Bakersfield in Tasmania Broadford it's a fun track I was just up there a couple of weekends ago I didn't know it was in there Calder Park a couple of extra ones here so a couple of them I know from V8 supercars other ones not so familiar with but if you get a chance to obviously go there you load the track you get to the position that you want be it the start finish line or wherever just try that so you got to drive at 30 kilometers an hour to activate it there you go and that'll then position yourself on the GPS system and show you basically your lap times and everything once you load the track and then once you pass that section that you've set on the on the track there it'll trigger a new lap there's logging status as well so you can uh, insert the special key um, and start the log and that'll download everything onto a USB stick stability control as you are driving the car will tell you if you are using ABS or if the car is slipping moving to the next page there there's a G meter um, oversteer or understeer so they're different types of um, I guess losing control of a vehicle um, you could call it that understeers pushing into a corner oversteers obviously oversteering into a corner and then we go to our, our shift light RPM gauge so at the moment we are in neutral the car is set for at the moment shifting in economy so you can see that there is a little bar up here as that revs come up you'll see the shift light come up across the bottom of the screen there and you can change that by pushing this button here you can go to performance and it moves the bar up to a little bit higher so it was at about 2000 before now it's a bit higher than that and the last one is track setting um, the car will also give you an audible beep to let you know when to shift up when you are getting close to the red line we're back to the gauges now so i think that'll finish us up for the interior of the car uh, we'll quickly jump into the gray one identical car but we'll just have a look at the condition of that one we won't run too much into all the information um, and then i'll uh, finish up okay so we've jumped across into the gray 2011 malu r8 um, so i'll just quickly run through the trip computer just give you the odometer. So this one's done 98,571 kilometers. Um, internally, fantastic condition again. The only niggling concern that a um, prospective buyer may have the vehicle, it's just a, some of the silver plating has come off uh, the gear selector there. Other than that, the shift knob's a little bit tired, a little bit worn. Um, some of the leather has started to peel off there, um, but it is overall in fantastic condition. I think there's a little tear there, but nothing a new shift knob or shift lever boot could fix same again in the center console as before um, same system as I mentioned you know they're one year apart in terms of the building and hitting the um, the roads here in Melbourne um, there's no difference between what the cars have in terms of uh, the stock systems you have the same EDI system build number 736 Again, you can see the HSV EDI system there. Um, I have driven this car once, um, found it really nice, sounded really good with the intake system as well. Um, again, fantastic condition. The only thing I can pick apart is probably the gear selector. Otherwise, it's a fantastic car. Thanks for watching this walk around video of our two HSV E Series 3 Malus in the R8s. Uh, the 2010-2011 model here. If you have any further questions on the vehicles or would like to come and have a look or a test drive, please don't hesitate to contact us here at Berwick Mitsubishi on 9907 
0555. The condition of both of these vehicles do mean that they are eligible for our premium mechanical protection plan. There is a link to that in the description below and there will also be a little pop-up in the bottom corner of the video as well. Click that, take you to another video, it doesn't go for too long. Uh, fill you a bit about that, that uh, package that we do offer on, on our vehicles that do qualify for it. It is fantastic, almost all of our customers take it up because they see the value in it. It's fantastic, it'll go for five years and give you 10 years of nationwide roadside assist. Again, any further questions on that, all the cars, call us on 9907 0555. I'm Mitch, on behalf of Berwick Mitsubishi, customer service is where we thrive. Thanks for watching.